All right, so get this. Imagine uh, trying to place like thousands of tiny components onto a circuit board by hand. Oh, wow. Talk about tedious, right? Yeah. That's why today we're diving deep into the world of automated component insertion. Right. We're going to unpack how these machines take the tedium out of electronics manufacturing. Right. And basically build the gadgets we can't live without. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually pretty mind-blowing how much precision and speed these machines bring to the table. Yeah. It's not just about placing parts. Yeah. It's about optimizing the entire process. Right. From design to finished product. Okay. And we've got a stack of sources from the big players in the industry like Universal Instruments and Shenzhen Southern Machinery that reveal the secrets behind it all. Okay, so first things first design. Okay. If you're picturing those green circuit boards, you know, they need to be built right from the start to work with these automated systems, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Our guides from Universal Instruments really stress the importance of the foundation. Mm. It's like building a house. If the foundation is wonky, everything else is going to be off. So we can't just slap components onto any old board? Nope. Okay. Things like board thickness and how much it warps play a huge role. Gotcha. If the board isn't flat and consistent, those automated machines can jam or misplace components, creating a whole mess of problems down the line. Yeah, and I bet time is money in these factories, so any mm. delay is a big deal. Yeah, you got. they even do this cool thing called panelization, mm. where they assemble multiple smaller boards as one big panel. Uh, like a buy one, get one free deal for efficiency. Smart. Now, what about the holes for the components? Are we talking microscopic precision here? Absolutely. Yeah. Universal Instruments lays out some strict guidelines for hole sizes and positions. Okay. Think of it as a lock and key. If the hole isn't the perfect size and in the exact right spot, the component won't fit properly. Right. And that throws a wrench in the whole automated assembly process. Okay. So the board's prepped and ready to bring on the robots. What strategies are used to make sure these machines are placing components as fast as possible? Efficiency is the name of the game. Yeah. One trick is optimizing where the components are placed and how they're oriented. Okay. For certain types of components, the fastest way is to have the machine insert them all in a single direction. Kind of like an assembly line where each worker has one specific job. Exactly. Okay. No wasted movement, just pure speed. And then there's this super cool concept called optimum pattern programming. Okay. Imagine you're a delivery driver. You want to plan your route so you hit all your stops in the most efficient way possible. Right. Yeah. Save gas and time. That's basically what optimum pattern programming is all about for these machines. Gotcha. They map out the most efficient path for inserting all those components, taking into account things like the little kickout motion the machine makes after placing each part. Hold on, kickout motion, do tell. So after the machine pushes the component into the hole, it moves slightly to the side to avoid bending the leads. Okay. It's a tiny movement, but it has to be accounted for in the programming to avoid collisions with other components. Wow. Starting to grasp the level of detail involved here. Let's focus on one type of component. Okay. Those little cylindrical ones with wires sticking out. Right. What are they called again? Axial components. Axial components, okay. And the universal guidelines have a whole section dedicated to them. All right. Ensuring they're inserted correctly without any damage. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, making sure all your ingredients are prepped and measured correctly before you start baking. So no dumping a whole bag of flour into the mixing bowl. Exactly. Then there are specific formulas for calculating the spacing between holes. Okay. Based on the length of the component, this ensures there's enough room for the machine's grippers to grab the component without crushing it. Can you give us an example? Sure. Like what if we had a component that was, say, the size of a dime? Let's say it's 10 millimeters long. According to the guidelines, the minimum distance between the holes would have to be about 13 millimeters. Okay. Give or take a bit, depending on the thickness of the board itself. Okay, so length matters. What about the width of the component? Does that come into play too? Definitely. The guidelines also have formulas relating the component's diameter. Okay. To the distance between the leads and the thickness of the board. If the component is too wide, it could get stuck during insertion or even damage the board. So it's a real balancing act. Not only do the holes need to be the right size and in the right place, but the components themselves have to fit within very specific dimensions too. Precisely. And the guidelines even get into the nitty gritty details of how those leads are bent and secured to the board after insertion. It's called clinching. Okay. They even have diagrams showing the different clinching patterns, mm -hmm. like 90 degree bends and 45 degree bends. Oh. Visuals are always helpful. Mm -hmm. So a 90 degree clinch would be like bending the leads straight down while a 45 degree clinch would be more diagonal. You got it. 
The type of clinch used depends on things like how densely packed the components are and the diameter of the leads themselves. Right. For example, a 45 degree clinch takes up less space, which is helpful when you have a lot of components crammed together. Ah, so it's all about maximizing space on those tiny boards makes sense. Now the guidelines also talk about clearances around the components. Why is that important? Those clearances are basically like breathing room. Okay. For the machine's tools, remember we talked about those grippers that grab the components. Yeah. They need space to maneuver and guide the leads into the holes. The guidelines specify exactly how much space is needed around different types of components and tools. Okay, starting to feel like an expert in the delicate dance of component insertion. It's like a perfectly choreographed ballet where everything has its place and moves in perfect harmony. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And just like a ballet needs a choreographer, these machines need precise programming to make sure everything runs smoothly. Speaking of different machines, we've been focusing a lot on the Universal Instruments guidelines. What about those documents from Shenzhen Southern Machinery? Right. Do they throw a wrench in everything we've learned so far? Not a wrench. Okay. But they definitely shift our focus to a different kind of machine, a radial inserter. Okay. And let me tell you, their S3000 radial inserter is in a league of its own. Ooh, intrigue. Yeah. Tell me more about this S3000 and what makes it so special. First off, the speed of this machine is mind-boggling. We're talking up to 18,000 components per hour. Whoa, that's way faster than the axial insertion processes we've been talking about. What's the secret sauce? Well, Shenzhen Southern Machinery was a bit late to the automated insertion game. Mm. But they've been playing catch-up at lightning speed in just a few years. They developed their own versions of all the major machines. Wow. Axial, radial, even odd-shaped components. And this S3000 represents the culmination of that innovation. So they basically said, hold my beer, we're going to revolutionize this whole industry. Pretty much. And they didn't just focus on speed. The S3000 is also incredibly flexible. Mm. It can handle a wide range of components and lead sizes thanks to its interchangeable tooling options. Plus, the insertion heads can rotate a full 360 degrees, giving it amazing dexterity. It's like the Swiss Army knife of component insertion machines. Exactly. Okay. And on top of that, they designed it to be incredibly cost-effective, mm. both in terms of energy consumption and maintenance. They've really thought of everything. Sounds like this S2000 is a real game changer, but before we get too carried away, what kinds of components can this radial inserter actually handle? You name it, it can probably handle it. Okay. Capacitors, transistors, diodes, LEDs, connectors, the list goes on and on. It's a true all-rounder. Wow, a true workhorse. Now, one thing that caught my eye in the S3000 documentation okay. is this mention of inward clinch tooling. What's that all about? This is where things get really interesting. Remember how we talked about those different clinching patterns? Well, traditional radial insertion typically uses outward clinches where the component leads are bent outwards after insertion. Right, like little legs sticking out. Exactly. Yeah. But the S3000 has this special option for inward clinches, where the leads are bent inwards instead. Now, why would you want to do that? Doesn't that just make things more cramped on the back of the board? That's the genius of it. Inward clinches actually allow you to pack components more tightly together mm. because the leads are tucked in close to the board. This is especially useful in applications like LED lighting where space is often at a premium. So it's like a space-saving superpower, kind of like those clever storage solutions you see for tiny apartments. Another benefit they highlight okay. is that inward clinches help prevent short circuits during the soldering process. Gotcha. By keeping those leads tucked in nice and tight, there's less chance of them accidentally touching other components or solder joints. Uh, so it's not just about saving space. It's about preventing potential problems later on. It's exactly. They've really thought through every aspect of the process. And for those who are visual learners, yeah. they even provide a link to a video showing the S3000 in action. We'll make sure to include that in the show notes. Awesome. Definitely adding that to my watch list. Now, we also have this operational manual for their S3010A machine. Right. Is that basically a deeper dive into how to actually use this radial inserter? Exactly. While the S3000 document gave us the high-level overview, Okay. this manual is like the instruction booklet guiding users through every step of operating the machine. Okay. It starts with the basics, emphasizing the importance of safety checks mm. before you even power it on. Safety first. Always a good reminder, especially when we're talking about these high-powered machines. And then it goes into the software interface, yeah, which seems pretty user-friendly. Mm -hmm. There's a production operation zone where you control things like starting and stopping the machine. Okay. 
resetting alarms and e even selecting different production modes. So it's like the control panel, but on a computer screen? Exactly. They also have a display showing the programmed insertion sequence. Hmm. So you can track what the machine is doing in real time, and if the machine ever stops unexpectedly. Yeah. There's even a section that explains the possible reasons why making troubleshooting a breeze. That's super helpful. No more head scratching wondering why the machine suddenly took a coffee break. And here's a cool feature. The software lets you import and export programs. Hmm. And you can even create and modify programs with the help of a camera system. Wait, camera assistance. So the camera helps you position the components and create the insertion program. Yep. It's like having an extra set of eyes to ensure everything is perfectly aligned. Wow. And to top it off, they even have sections on motor debugging manufacturer information and a comprehensive help system. Talk about comprehensive support. Okay, so they've covered everything from basic operation to troubleshooting and support. Sounds like they've really gone above and beyond to create a positive user experience. Now, while we have a document that mentions PCB assembly requirements, mm -hmm. it doesn't get into specifics. But what's really fascinating is the S3000 documents overview of the many different applications for radial insertion technology. So this technology isn't just for building smartphones and laptops. Nope. It's used in everything from LED lighting and displays to home appliances like air conditioners and microwaves. Wow. They even mention the automotive industry, where it's used for things like power supplies and audio systems. Wow. So we're not just talking about consumer electronics. This technology is impacting almost every industry. Absolutely. Yeah. And the automotive examples are particularly interesting. Yeah. They use radial insertion machines for everything from the electronics and power steering systems to the complex circuitry and, and infotainment systems and advanced driver assistance features. It's amazing to think that these tiny components placed with such precision by these machines are literally driving innovation in so many fields. And the beauty of it is that these advancements don't just benefit manufacturers. Right. They ultimately benefit us, the consumers. They make products more affordable, more reliable, and more capable. Okay, I have to ask, with all this talk about the S3000, is there anything else out there? Or is this machine truly the king of the hill? The S3000 is definitely a leader in the radial insertion world. Okay. But it's not the only game in town. Other companies like Universal Instruments also have their own versions of radial insertion machines. So there's healthy competition in this space, which is always good for driving innovation. Exactly. And the S3000 doesn't claim to do everything. Right. For example, if you're dealing with components that have a really unusual shape or require very specific handling, you might need a different type of machine, like an odd form inserter. Makes sense. It's like having different tools for different jobs. You wouldn't use a hammer to screw in a light bulb. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And just like a good toolbox has a variety of tools. Right. A well-equipped electronics factory will have a mix of different insertion machines to handle the diverse range of components used in modern electronics. So we've talked a lot about the S3000 and its capabilities, but let's switch gears a bit and talk about the actual people who operate these machines. What's the learning curve like for someone who's never used a radial inserter before? That's where the S3010A operational manual comes in handy. Okay. It's basically a step-by-step -step guide for getting up and running with the machine. So it's like the dummy's guide to radial insertion. Kind of. Okay. But don't let that fool you. It's still a very technical document. Yeah. But it's written in a way that's clear and easy to understand. Hmm. even for someone who's new to this type of technology. Well, that's good news for anyone who might be intimidated by these complex machines. Now, what kind of things does the manual cover? It covers everything from the initial setup and calibration of the machine hmm. to the day-to-day -day operation and maintenance procedures. It even includes troubleshooting tips and guidance on how to handle common errors or problems that might arise. Sounds pretty comprehensive. Does it require any specific training or certifications to operate these machines? That's going to vary depending on the company and the specific regulations in place. However, in general, a good understanding of electronics manufacturing principles right. and some hands-on experience with similar machines would be a strong foundation. So someone with a background in electronics assembly would probably have a, a leg up. Absolutely. Yeah. And many manufacturers offer their own training programs to get operators up to speed on their specific machines and software. That makes sense. But back to the manual, does it dive into the software that controls the machine? Yeah. Because we talked earlier about that camera-assisted programming feature, and I'm really curious to learn more about that. You're in luck. The manual goes into quite a bit of detail about the software interface, okay. which, according to Shenzhen Southern Machinery, 
is designed to be very user friendly. Mm. It walks you through all the different menus and functions, okay. explaining mm. what each button and icon does. So no need to be a coding whiz to operate this thing. <laughs> Not at all. They've really tried to make the software as intuitive as possible. Yeah. And the camera assistance is a great example of that. Okay, remind me how that camera assistance works again. Basically, the camera acts as a second set of eyes for the operator. Okay. It helps with things like positioning the components correctly. Right. Verifying that the leads are inserted into the right holes mm. and even creating the insertion program itself. So instead of having to manually program every single step, yeah. the camera can basically see what needs to be done and translate that into instructions for the machine. Exactly. It's like having a robotic assistant. Wow. That helps you with the most tedious and precise tasks. That's incredible. It really shows how far automation technology has come. But even with all these advancements, there's still a human element involved, right? Absolutely. These machines are incredibly sophisticated. Yeah. But they still need skilled operators to oversee the process. Right. Ensure everything is running smoothly and troubleshoot any problems that might arise. So it's not just about replacing human workers with robots. It's about finding ways for them to work together effectively. Exactly. And that balance is constantly evolving as technology continues to advance. Well, on that note, let's talk about the future. With all the incredible innovation we've seen in PCB design and assembly, right. what do you think the next big thing will be? That's a great question and one that's difficult to answer definitively. Yeah. But if I had to make a prediction, I think we'll see a continued push towards even greater miniaturization and complexity. So even smaller components and even more densely packed boards. Exactly. Right. Think about the trend in smartphones and other devices. Right. They keep getting smaller and thinner, but the functionality keeps expanding to achieve that manufacturers need to cram more and more components into a smaller and smaller space. I can barely see the components on my phone's motherboard as it is. They're like microscopic grains of rice. Exactly. Yeah. And that trend is only going to continue. We're also going to see more integration of different technologies. Mm. Like embedding microchips directly into the PCB itself. Wow, that's mind boggling. It sounds like the future of PCB design and assembly is gonna be all about pushing the limits of what's physically possible. Absolutely, and it's gonna be an exciting ride to see how these advancements shape the technology of tomorrow. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground today from the importance of meticulous PCB design to the mind-blowing capabilities of the S3000 radial inserter. Right. But before we wrap things up, I want to touch on something you mentioned earlier. Okay. The importance of finding the right balance between automation and human expertise. Mm. Can you elaborate on that a bit more? Of course, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of all these technological advancements and think that robots are going to take over the world. Cue the ominous sci-fi music. <laughs> but the reality is that humans are still very much needed in the world of electronics. Manufacturing these machines may be incredibly precise and efficient, Yeah, but they're not capable of independent thought or problem solving. So it's not about replacing humans with robots. It's about finding ways for them to work together effectively. Exactly. Humans are still needed to design the PCBs program, the machines oversee the production process, and ensure that the final products meet the required quality standards. And let's not forget the importance of human creativity and innovation. Those are things that robots can't replicate yet anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. Ultimately, it's the collaboration between human ingenuity and technological advancements that drives progress in this field. It sounds like the future of electronics manufacturing is going to be a fascinating blend of human ingenuity and robotic precision. Right. Kind of like a high-tech dance between man and machine. That's a great way to put it. And like any good dance partnership, it requires both sides to be in sync and working together seamlessly. Okay, so before we get carried away daydreaming about the robot-powered factories of the future, yeah. let's bring things back down to earth and recap what we've learned today. Sounds good. We started by emphasizing the importance of laying a solid foundation. Okay. Literally, we talked about how crucial it is to design the PCB itself with automation in mind, considering factors like board thickness and warp. Right. to avoid those costly production hiccups. And who can forget those tiny holes? Talk about a need for precision. We learned how hole sizes and positions need to be absolutely perfect to ensure those components fit snugly and securely. Then we dove into the strategies used to maximize efficiency during component insertion, like single axis insertion for those speedy straight line placements and the clever route planning of optimum pattern programming. It's amazing how much thought goes into optimizing every single movement of those machines. Right. 
Talk about efficiency in action. And then, of course, we had to explore the world of radial insertion with the Shenzhen Southern Machinery S3000. That machine is a true marvel of engineering, capable of placing thousands of components per hour with incredible accuracy. I'm still mind blown by that speed. It's like watching a tiny, super fast robot orchestra assemble a symphony of electronics. And not only is it fast, but it's also incredibly flexible, able to handle a wide variety of components and lead sizes thanks to those interchangeable tooling options. Plus, those rotating insertion heads give it some serious dexterity. It really does sound like the Swiss army knife of insertion machines. Yeah. But even with all that automation, we learned that human expertise is still absolutely essential. It's that collaboration between human and machine that truly drives innovation in this field. Exactly. And it's important to remember that these advancements aren't just about making things faster and cheaper. Hmm. They also enable us to create more sophisticated and reliable products. So ultimately, it benefits us, the consumers. We get access to better technology, faster and at a more affordable price. Precisely. And that brings us to our final takeaway as we look to the future. Okay. We can expect to see even more incredible advancements in PCB design and assembly driven by the ever-growing demand for smaller, more powerful, and more feature-rich devices. So what does this all mean for you, our fellow deep diver? As you navigate the ever-evolving world of technology, remember that automation is more than just a buzzword. Right. It's a fundamental force shaping the products we use and the way they're made. And with that in mind, here's a final thought to ponder. Considering the rapid pace of innovation, what might the next generation of component insertion machines look like? Will we see even greater speeds, even more sophisticated programming, or perhaps even self-learning robots capable of adapting to new components and designs on the fly? Be sure to check out the links we've provided to see the S3000 in action and delve deeper into the technical specs of the S3010A machine. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. And remember, knowledge is power. Stay curious, friends. It really is mind-blowing when you think about it, all these tiny components coming together to make the tech we use every single day. And it's these machines working tirelessly behind the scenes that make it all possible. It's a symphony of precision and speed, really. And what we've discussed so far is just scratching the surface. There's a whole world of applications and innovations within this field that are constantly pushing the boundaries. Well, let's keep exploring. You mentioned a document about specific requirements for PCB assembly. Right. What can you tell us about that? Unfortunately, the document from SM Help uh, doesn't provide a ton of detail on the specifics. Okay. It does, however, underscore the importance of careful planning and execution in the PCD assembly process. So it's more of a high-level overview rather than a deep dive. Exactly. But fear not, because yeah. we have the Shenzhen Southern Machinery documents to satisfy our thirst for details. Right. They offer some fascinating insights into the practical applications of radial insertion technology. Okay, so back to our speedy friend, the S3000. Where do we see this technology being used in the real world? It's everywhere. LED lighting is a huge one. Okay. Think about those bright, energy-efficient bulbs and displays. Right. They rely heavily on radial insertion machines like the S3000 to place all those tiny LEDs. And LEDs are getting used in more and more things these days. My TV, my phone screen, even my car headlights. Exactly. And it doesn't stop there. Okay. The S3000 is used in the manufacturing of all sorts of home appliances, from air conditioners and refrigerators to microwaves and washing machines. It even plays a crucial role in the automotive industry. Wow. So we're not just talking about consumer electronics. This technology is impacting almost every industry. Absolutely. And the automotive examples are particularly interesting. Yeah. They use radial insertion machines for everything from the electronics and power steering systems to the complex circuitry in infotainment systems and advanced driver assistance features. It's amazing to think that these tiny components placed with such precision by these machines are literally driving innovation in so many fields. And the beauty of it is that these advancements don't just benefit manufacturers. Right. They ultimately benefit us, the consumers. They make products more affordable, more reliable, and more capable. Okay, I have to ask, with all this talk about the S3000, is there anything else out there? Or is this machine truly the king of the hill? The S3000 is definitely a leader in the radial insertion world. Okay. But uh, it's not the only game in town. Other companies like Universal Instruments also have their own versions of radial insertion machines. So there's healthy competition in this space, which is always good for driving innovation. Exactly. And the S3000 doesn't claim to do everything. Right. For example, if you're dealing with components that have a really unusual shape or require very specific handling, you might need a different type of machine. 
like an odd form inserter. Makes sense. It's like having different tools for different jobs. You wouldn't use a hammer to screw in a light bulb. Precisely. And just like a good toolbox has a variety of tools, a well-equipped electronics factory will have a mix of different insertion machines right. to handle the diverse range of components used in modern electronics. So we've talked a lot about the S3000 and its capabilities, but let's switch gears a bit and talk about the actual people who operate these machines. Okay. What's the learning curve like for someone who's never used a radial inserter before? That's where the S3010A operational manual comes in handy. Okay. It's basically a step-by-step -step guide for getting up and running with the machine. So it's like the dummy's guide to radial insertion. Kind of, but don't let that fool you. It's still a very technical document, but it's written in a way that's clear and easy to understand, even for someone who's new to this type of technology. Well, that's good news for anyone who might be intimidated by these complex machines. What kind of things does the manual cover? It covers everything from the initial setup and calibration of the machine to the day-to-day -day operation and maintenance procedures. Okay. It even includes troubleshooting tips and guidance on how to handle common errors or problems that might arise. Sounds pretty comprehensive. Does it require any specific training or certifications to operate these machines? That's going to vary depending on the company and the specific regulations in place. Yeah. However, in general, a good understanding of electronics manufacturing principles and some hands-on experience with similar machines would be a strong foundation. So someone with a background in electronics assembly would probably have a leg up. Absolutely. And many manufacturers offer their own training programs to get operators up to speed on their specific machines and software. That makes sense. Now, back to the manual, does it dive into the software that controls the machine? Because we talked earlier about that camera-assisted programming feature, and I'm really curious to learn more about that. You're in luck. The manual goes into quite a bit of detail about the software interface, mm. which according to Shenzhen Southern Machinery, is designed to be very user-friendly. Mm. It walks you through all the different menus and functions, explaining what each button and icon does. So no need to be a coding whiz to operate this thing. Not at all. They've really tried to make the software as intuitive as possible, and the camera assistance is a great example of that. Okay, remind me how that camera assistance works again. Basically, the camera acts as a second set of eyes for the operator. Okay. It helps with things like positioning the components correctly, verifying that the leads are inserted into the right holes, and even creating the insertion program itself. So instead of having to manually program every single step, the camera can basically see what needs to be done and translate that into instructions for the machine. Exactly. It's like having a robotic assistant that helps you with the most tedious and precise tasks. That's incredible. It really shows how far automation technology has come. But even with all these advancements, there's still a human element involved, right? Absolutely. These machines are incredibly sophisticated, but they still need skilled operators to oversee the process, ensure everything is running smoothly, and troubleshoot any problems that might arise. So it's not just about replacing human workers with robots. It's about finding ways for them to work together effectively. Exactly. And that balance is constantly evolving as technology continues to advance. Yeah, it really is like a high-tech dance between humans and machines. It is. And, uh, yeah. you know, like any good dance partners, they have to be in sync, working seamlessly together. Okay, so before we uh, get carried away daydreaming about the robot-powered factories of the future, let's bring it back down to Earth and recap what we've learned today. Sounds good. We yeah. started by really emphasizing the importance of laying a solid foundation. Literally, we talked about how crucial it is to design the PCB itself with automation in mind. Yeah. Considering factors like board thickness and warp to avoid those costly production hiccups. Right. And who can forget about those tiny holes? Talk about a need for precision. We learned how those hole sizes and positions need to be absolutely perfect. Oh, yeah. To ensure those components fit snugly and securely. Then we dove into all the strategies used to really maximize efficiency during component insertion. Yeah. Like single axis insertion for those speedy straight line blades. And of course, the, uh, the clever route planning optimal pattern. Yeah, it's amazing how much it
machine that truly drives innovation. it benefits us the consumer we get access to better technology faster and at a more affordable price precisely and that brings us to our final takeaway as we look to the future we can expect to see even more incredible advancements in pcb design and assembly driven by the ever-growing demand for smaller more powerful and more feature-rich devices so what does this all mean for you our fellow deep diver as you navigate the ever-evolving world of technology Remember that automation is more than just a buzzword. It's a fundamental force shaping the products that we use and the way they're made. And with that in mind, here's a final thought to ponder. Considering the rapid pace of innovation, what might the next generation of component insertion machines look like? Will we see even greater speeds, even more sophisticated programming, or perhaps even self-learning robots capable of adapting to new components and designs on the fly? Be sure to check out the links we've provided to see the S3000 in action and delve deeper into the technical specs of the S3010A machine. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. And remember, knowledge is power. Stay curious, friends.